today i would like to present to us valion a formal framework for verifying implementations of hybrid fault tolerant hybrid byzantine fault tolerant protocols this is a joint work with my co-supervisor vincent rally and my supervisor paula estevez verissima as you all know our lives strongly depend, depend on different, different critical information infrastructures, such as power grids, autonomous vehicles, train control systems, surgical robots, and many others. Unfortunately, due to complexity of these systems, errors might exist. If we add on top of this sophisticated attacks, such as Stuxnet and WannaCry, it is clear that ensuring correct behavior of these systems is very difficult. So now the question is, how can we make sure that these critical information infrastructures actually work correctly? One technique that can be applied is testing. And although I agree that this technique is mandatory, we all know that we cannot test for all possible runs of the system. And because of this, faults still might exist. Ideally, we should ensure correctness of these systems to the highest standard possible and using the smallest trust and computing base, which is to say using, for example, theorem provers. Unfortunately, state-of-the-art tools are not yet ready to tackle with complex infrastructures in full, and because of that, bugs and attacks are bound to happen in partially verified systems. One standard way to mitigate these, tag, uh, these uh, issues is to use some fault-tolerant protocol, for example, Byzantine fault-tolerant protocols. BFTSMR stands for Byzantine Fault Tolerant State Machine Replication. This is actually a general technique that can be applied to any deterministic service. This, techniques, and this technique enables correct functioning of the system even when some parts of the system are under attack or they are not working correctly. This is possible thanks to the fact that behavior of minority of possibly faulty replicas is masked behind the behavior of majority of correct replicas which operate in consensus. To support formal verification of homogeneous BFTSMR protocols and their implementations, we already developed Lizarius. As a case study, we verify PBFT, which is a seminal protocol in this area, in this area and PBFT sounded interesting for us because many blockchain technologies and many blockchain protocols actually use or are inspired by some variant of this protocol. Unfortunately, standard Byzantine fault tolerant state machine replications are, protocols are very costly. They actually require 3F plus 1 replica to tolerate F faults. For example, as you can see on the figure above, we need four replicas in order to tolerate one faulty replica. On top of this, as you can see on the figure below, in order to execute only a single client request, many messages have to be generated. To reduce cost of standard Byzantine fault tolerant state machine replication protocols, hybrid versions of these protocols will develop. These protocols actually rely on the existence of the trusted trustworthy component, for example, Intel SGX. And as you can see, the required number of replicas is significantly reduced from 3F plus 1 to 2F plus 1. So now, in order to tolerate one fault, we don't need any more four replicas, only three. And also, as you can see on the figure below, executing single client request requires less messages to be exchanged. So now the question is why this reduction is and how is possible. Hybrid Byzantine fault tolerant protocols benefit from the fact of benefit from the fact that systems are composed of trusted and non-trusted components. And thanks to this hybrid architecture, it is now possible to derive stronger guarantees about this hybrid system than it would be possible with a homogeneous one. Let's take a look at the simple example. Let's assume that we have two replicas, replica 0 and replica 1, and that these two replicas can fail arbitrarily. Let's also assume that these two replicas are equipped with some special trusted component, for example, Intel SGX, that can only fail by crashing, and otherwise will produce always correct results. Let's assume now that replica 0 would like to send message to replica 1. 
In this case, replica zero will call its trusted component, which will create a forgeable token. And then this signed uh, message will be disseminated to the other side. Upon receive, replica one will call its trusted component to verify this token. And as you can see, even in presence of arbitrary faults, thanks to the fact that trusted component can only fail by crashing and otherwise will produce correct results, the token remains unforgeable. Now the question is, what do we actually need to reason about these hybrid BFT SMR protocols? As you might guess, we need some, t some language that will <coughs> enable us to implement systems as a collection of components. And also, we need some model that will enable us to reason about different failure assumptions. But we are talking here about distributed systems that will exchange quite some number of messages. So it will be really useful that we have some way of capturing high-level reasoning about this system without reasoning about low-level details. This is why we develop a Svalio a formal framework for verifying implementations of hybrid BFT SMR protocols. To, uh, to enable implementing systems as collection of components, we develop MOC, a monadic component language. To enable reasoning about different failure assumptions, we developed HILO, a hybrid logical event. And to enable reasoning about both hybrid as well as homogeneous systems at the high level of abstraction without having to reason about its low level details, we develop LOC, our logical event calculus of knowledge. Our monadic component language enables implementing systems as a collection of local systems, such that each lo local system is actually composed of any number of components. And here to enable that different components can call each other, we use monads. Also because we would like to reason about hybrid fault tolerant protocols, our components can be either trusted or non-trusted. But before I go into more details about our second contribution, HILO, let me show, let me briefly explain you how one can prove properties about distributed system. To prove property about distributed system, one has to prove that this property is true for all possible run of the distributed systems. In literature, two main models of the distributed systems can be found. Happen before relation or global state semantics. Using a happen before relation, distributed system is modeled as a collection of events happening at different location, such that these events are connected using happen before relation. This, this relation actually defines partial order between events. And as you can see here, replica zero send message to replica one and replica two, and now we can say that uh, event E1 caused events E2 and E3. Happen before relation also allows capturing the asynchrony of the system. For example, it might happen that some event, for example, E4, happened after event E1, but the order at which replica 1 received messages was completely reversed. Using a global state semantics, a distributed system is modeled as a single state machine when a state is composed of collection of states of all processes at a given time. And transition takes a message in flight, updates its global state, and delivers it to the recipient. We chose to rely on happen before relation because in our experience it, it corresponds more closely to the way distributed system engineers and designers reason about distributed systems. One, okay. Okay, some black magic is happening. One of the most fundamental concepts to reason about distributed system is the concept of event, which uh, can be seen as the point in space and time when something happened. To support reasoning about hybrid fault, hybrid fault tolerant protocols, we developed uh, our model supports reasoning about three types of events. Events that uh, followed uh, events at which nodes follow the specification, for example, uh, something like event E1. 
events that correspond to some arbitrary behavior, for example, event E4. And in this case, we have no knowledge actually what happened at, e at event E4. Or the third type is uh, our events that happened at, uh, that were caused by some arbitrary behavior, but in this case, trusted component was called. For example, event E7. In this case, we can only rely on the, on the knowledge gained by the trusted component. So now let me show you using a simple example how our mock local system evolved with respect with our HILO. Let's assume that our system receive a protocol message. In this case, <coughs> message will be processed and possibly states of some components might be updated. But now the question is what happens if some Byzantine behavior happens, some arbitrary event happens. In this case, we cannot rely anymore on the states of the non-trusted components. The only component that we can rely on is the, the, is the trusted one. So now in case we would, for example, have some trusted call, then again, we can only rely on the, uh, we can only rely on the state of the trusted component and we ca cannot uh, reason about, we cannot know what is the current state of the non-trusted components. As mentioned before, to enable reasoning about homogeneous as well as hybrid fault-tolerant protocols at a high level of abstraction without having to worry about its low-level details, we developed LOC, our, uh, our hybrid knowledge calculus. As many already know, uh, knowledge calculus has been used for, for uh, by, uh, reason, uh, reasoning about distributed system at the level of the knowledge is a widely studied concept. And although our knowledge theory is uh, similar to the standard knowledge logics, our model operators are actually computable. So let me provide you a simple example. Let's assume that Replica 0 would like to send some information to Replica 1. In this case, Replica 1 has to know some piece of data if it would like to disseminate it to the other ones. So now in this, this we capture through our model operator knows. Then if it would like to send some piece of information, then we say that this piece of information is disseminated. But now Replica 1 learned some piece of information and because it learned it, now it can store it so it can again know it. And now we can repeat again. Replica 1 would, if, uh, would like to send, if Replica 1 would like to send message to Replica 2, then we can say that some piece of data is disseminated. Then at event E3, Replica 2 will learn some piece of data, and then because it learned it, it will know it, and so forth. This brings us to one of our main contributions regarding our logic of event calculus of knowledge, and this is our distributed lifting lemma. Let's assume that some trusted piece of knowledge T was generated for some non-trusted piece of knowledge D1. Then, thanks to our framework, we can lift the knowledge obtained as a trusted component to the level of the local system. And we can go even further to the level of the distributed system. In a sense, if you have two replicas that produce some piece of no some uh, piece of knowledge which is trusted T, and this piece of knowledge was generated for two different pieces of non-trusted knowledge D1 and D2. Then, on the level of the distributed system, we know that these two pieces of non-trusted knowledge have to be the same. As you can see, thanks to this lemma, we can lift knowledge from the level of the trusted component to the level of the distributed system. As a case study, among other things, we verify implementation of the MIMBFT, which is seminal hybrid Byzantine fault tolerant protocol. We believe that verifying MIMBFT is very important because many other BFT protocols use MIMBFT. Trusted component used in MIMBFT is used in many other BFT protocols. And to the best of our knowledge, MIMBFT has the trusted component that has the smallest trusted computing base compared to the other uh, trusted component used in other hybrid protocols. As you can see on this slide, we proved the agreement property of MIMBFT, which says if two correct replicas 
well, executed two different requests, which says that two correct replicas cannot execute two different exa uh, two different requests with the same counter. Thanks to Cox, all all thanks to Cox extraction mechanism, we obtain OCaml executable code. Because some parts of our OCaml code should run inside the trusted environment, we developed a small runtime which enables running trusted parts of OCaml code inside Intel SGX. We compared our MIMBFT implementation with our PBFT implementation, and it turns out for all the cases we run, which is to say for F equal 1, 2, and 3, our MIMBFT implementation was faster. This is thanks to the, we believe that this is thanks to the fact that we use lighter crypto in case of MIMBFT, and also that because of the fact that MIMBFT has less communication steps compared to the PBFT. To summarize, today I presented the Svalion, a formal framework for verifying hybrid fault tolerant protocols, and as you can see on the side, our code is publicly available. Thank you. So nice work. Uh, you proof safety. Do you think you can also prove liveness using the, this approach? No, uh, we leave reasoning about liveness. Sure, because to prove safety uh, using our logic, you have to reason about past events. Because you have, like, for agreement property, you you already have that your system did the output for some executed some request, and for liveness it. And thanks to the fact that uh, we are reasoning this way, uh, we can always go back in time and use induction. And some things can be proved by induction. But to, prove, to reason about liveness, then you have to construct all possible uh, traces. And because of this, like um, currently, we left it for the future work. But it will be interesting in the future to, to see how it works. Okay, Thank you. Hi, thanks for your talk. I was wondering if you could say a few words about the effort that was involved in getting the the cock theorems to go through. What was the relative cost of proofs, relative lines of code, things like that? Okay, uh, so uh, it took us around one person a year uh, to uh, build a framework and formally verify the implementations of the MIMBFT. And if I remember correctly, we have around 30k lines, almost 30k lines of code. Uh, so the I didn't get the second part of the question. I'm sorry. Okay. No. Do you know what percent of those lines were proof and what percent were code? Out of the uh, you can, uh, I don't know by uh, by heart, but it's pretty much like half half. Uh, but you can find these numbers in the paper. And I can check offline. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's thank the speaker again.